Spinal Wellness Center, your Irvine chiropractor. I'm here with my wonderful John Dickinson, who is not only an athlete, and I'm going to let John really introduce himself with less, with less humility here. Talk about um, who you are, what your background is, if you don't mind, while we're waiting for people to come on board. And that way, uh, today's discussion is basically a duo presentation from a chiropractor's point of view and a coach a strength and conditioning coach slash an athlete's point of view and the purpose of all of this is not necessarily for just the athletes but for an average person who wishes to be um, more active and doesn't want to necessarily end up with injuries so uh uh, if you don't mind, John, introduce yourself and uh, let us know what your background is. Okay. Uh, yeah, so like Dr. Shakib said, I'm John. Um, I just received my bachelor's at from UCI in exercise science. Um, exercise science? Exercise science, yeah. That's fantastic. Uh, in exercise science, and with that, um, but previous to that, I completed the CSCS test, which uh, certifies me as a strength conditioning coach under the NSCA. Um, in high school, I was a three-sport athlete played basketball, football, and threw for track and field. Uh, my senior year for track and field, uh, I was undefeated in all county meets, so any meet in Santa Barbara, I never lost. Um, That's fantastic. My best throw in high school was around 55 feet uh, in the shot put discus, about 150. Wasn't that good, but I enjoyed it. Um, and so- All after, over the planet in the different Athletic field, huh? Yeah. And so uh, after that, uh, I spent four years at UCI, uh, primarily focusing on the hammer and the shot put. Um, in the hammer, I ranked uh, eighth all time uh, at UCI uh, for my mark fifty three meters and fifty three meters sixty nine centimeters. Um, and yeah, my best squat two hundred and forty kilos, was about five hundred and thirty pounds. Um, my best bench one hundred and sixty kilos. 360 pounds, um, and then my best deadlift. We didn't do deadlifts much, but when we did, I think my best uh, lift was 220 kilos, 485 pounds for about five reps. My goodness, that's amazing. And I know from the history that you have shared with me, some of these led to certain injuries that kind of made you realize, you know, I should be sharing this information with people. And that's really the essence of these duo presentations because we learn from our mistakes and many times our mistakes lead us to avenues in life that we never considered uh, prior to. And I, I think that allows you in, in this situation to be, a, uh, to have a better connection with injury and the impact of injury on potentially you know there are people who are on um, scholarships and that's the end of their scholarship yeah if, especially if you can't produce anymore i mean some universities wouldn't obviously take that into account and work with you but you know at the end of the day if you have a, if you have a career ending injury i mean uh, there's not much you can do and there's not much they can do for you um, so we want to prevent that at all costs exactly so um in the past if you haven't watched our videos uh, all of these videos that we do is on, on my um, youtube channel which is under irvine spinal wellness center and this video will be posted on the youtube channel as well and of course uh, we have our own different other avenues uh, through social media like facebook that will be sharing that there or linkedin i do um, i think last time you uh, shared that on linkedin yeah. Uh, so that's also available. I do invite you to um, join John and on on my YouTube channel where all of these series for the next 11 months <laughs> will be posted there. And uh, we, sh we talked about just the importance of um, paying attention to the different cues that your body gives you while you're working out either uh, either in athletic performances that are more competitive or just simply at the 
gym. Today, uh, John suggested that we talk about core because that's so important. And I thought, uh, John, uh, do you want to discuss the core and what that even means? Because I think a lot of times people think the core is their app, so they do a lot of abdominal crunches, which is not a good idea, or they work on their back, which, uh, you know, I, I kind of get a kick out of watching videos of people at the gym that they post actually on YouTube and how they go about doing it. It's like, oh my God, please don't do that. So do you want to um, explain to everyone watching what the core actually means? Because I think you need some clarification there. So our core, as we want to call it, is basically anything that stabilizes our spine, um, keeps it from moving. It can range from, you know, our neck all the way down to right, uh, our, right above our pelvis. Um, basically what, you know, the function or the, its action, what it's supposed to do is, like I said, prevent our spine from moving or give it strength through whatever range of motion that it goes through. So it really creates the stability. And just like John mentioned, your core is not just the front of your uh, uh, abdomen or the back of your abdomen. I'm just going to throw in a little something that is, I think, valuable uh, for all discussions from this point forward. We have three different diaphragms, if you may. One is at the neck level, one is at the diaphragm level, and then there is another one called pelvic diaphragm. All of these need to be parallel to each other, and the purpose of those is to really, it's a cavity that we're looking at. So it's a volume of space and not a linear space that you're looking at. And um, what it does is it prevents you, it gives you more of an axial, meaning midline, strength and stability so your arms and legs can move without really damaging it. It gives it more uh, of a stability so there is not so much deviation to the sides or rotation or side bendings so you can actually injure your spine. And the reason spine is so valuable is because it's a highway between your brain and your body parts. Without your nervous system, you're called a vegetable. So uh, we want to make sure that uh, you understand what the core is. Doing abdominal crunch, the book following a wrong pattern of movement, does more damage than no ab workout. Would you say? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, for some bodybuilders and high level athletes to take that avenue, you know, there's, I think there's something to be said about, you know, maybe some leg raises or some slow, you know, uh, directed abdominal exercises because that contraction, um, that contraction is what's going to make, you know, your abs grow, you know, but for most people, you don't really, you, you don't need too much of that. You should probably focus on stabilizing your core first and getting it functioning correctly and then you know if you want to throw in something here or there you know within reason you know then i think there's something to say about, you said about that and you know here's a, a deal breaker for you guys i hope i'm not breaking too many people's heart here having the six pack to me uh, doing what i do is actually a sign of uh, imbalance Having an hourglass in women is another sign of imbalance, improper core. So uh, uh, just be aware of that six pack. Don't go for a six pack or, you know, you see these men with the serratus anterior buffed up. It's like, that's not even supposed to be buffed up. You know that guy is just working out to gain some muscle. So um, now that you understand what, uh, what the core actually is, um, John, why don't we talk about, um, it's like, if someone injures their back, which is very common, wouldn't you say? Like, in all the different athletic fields, what was the most common injury that you encountered, oh, yourself or your colleague? Back, by, by far by back. back. Uh, all, I'd say all sports. Um, I mean, I'd say probably more than the knees with women's soccer because of, you know, the cue angle, different stuff of that sort in their anatomical structure, but for most athletes, it's just their low back. My low back hurts. Yeah. And, and that's just universal. Um, and, uh, yeah. and you know, that talking about soccer, I mean, at some point I feel like we should talk about a closed kinematic chain, open kinematic chain, and core involvement. Um, because I think that's regardless of what sports uh, people are playing or what activity they're playing, they're um, um, encountering at the gym. And, um, 
open and closed kinematic chain is a huge thing, which we'll talk about it later. But so let's say someone injured their back. What is the first line of, and let's say they've already been to me, we've already done some of this stuff, as a chiropractor, as a sports chiropractor, as a rehab with the movement, uh, um, developmental kinesiology, which I do, uh, as an example. So whatever the paradigm that you go, or whatever um, modality that you use. So now they're back and they're working out. What okay. is your recommendation in those instances? Okay, well, we've already gotten to, so that, like, like you mentioned, there's different levels, of, I think, of back pain. If you have some pain, some pain or some discomfort, but you know, most things you do doesn't aggravate it, it's just uncomfortable, that's one thing. But you know, we can get down to the level of, you know, I can barely breathe because when I inhale, you know, my back tightens up. And so those are two, I wouldn't, those are two different levels, but so we say we're walking around. Well, we probably a, at that point, they shouldn't be even working out. Oh yeah, no, at that point, Just then FYI, we should focus don't on Don't try to, what's the, what's the saying that they say, kind of brush it off and just work it out, oh, yeah, right? Just, 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 just walk it off or you yeah. walk it off, yeah. But I mean, that's, that's a little funny because that's, that's probably the first thing I would recommend to somebody is just to go walk. Like it's walking. To go walk, but not work out. <laughs> yeah, if, no, don't, not as like a workout, but movement movement just to try go walking um and if that doesn't hurt you know go walk that that doesn't mean go for a three-hour walk you know while you're brisk no i just like, or on a slope no or I'm, hiking because <laughs> people like to take <laughs> you know i'll say go on a walk and then okay i'll go walk for three hours you know at the beach up to, no that's not what i mean i just go for a 10 minute walk you know turn on your your timer go for five minutes and five minutes back and get a little maybe a little sweat or something but that that's it um, and then once we can do that with no pain, then we can move on to the next step, uh, which I think it w uh, would be learning how to properly brace your core for different types of movements. Um, so what does bracing the core mean? So for those of you who are watching and are not familiar with that. Term. So essentially when we're bracing our core, we want to increase the intro abdominal pressure within our, within our stomach or our core to so prevent that's... movement. So that's this diaphragm and the pelvic diaphragm. The interabdominal pressure is the pressure between these two. And so you don't want to be going into this move thinking you're bracing your core because that I do see. Yeah, we don't want we don't want any deviations either way. I'm gonna grab to... this visual. <laughs> okay, so this is one of those bags that comes with like Amazon delivery. <laughs> But if I have this bag, and I don't know if you guys can see it, that's just a bag filled with air. So that's my pelvic diaphragm, and this is my other diaphragm up here, the one that everyone knows about. So if I have this, and it doesn't always have to be filled with air, but if the walls of this thing is nice and it's got an integrity and intention to it, well then it's very hard to make it fall forward or go side to side or backward unless I pop it. So bracing your core is not just to put pressure on the front because that is not proper either. Bracing it is like literally embracing the whole cavity here. So I use this one because no. I think it's a yeah, good that's, visual. Yeah, that's perfect because like uh, we like to say, we want to keep our pelvis and our, and our shoulders, you know, stacked. And so this is the perfect analogy because, you know, if, if it's stacked, we're not moving. If it's, we have that uh, anterior pelvic tilt, it's probably going to pop out the front. And if we have that posterior pelvic tilt, it's probably going to pop out the back. So that's one, that's the first thing we want to start with is keep our, our hips and our, our shoulders stacked. And then from there we can go, okay, how do I create tension within my core, with my pelvis and my shoulders being stacked? And I think the first thing we can do, you know, is lay on the ground and then with, so the conventional way of bracing your core, I see from, you know, power lifting and stuff, you, you take a big breath of air, you put it in your chest, you, your, your back, and you, you hold your breath, the Valsalva maneuver to just tighten everything, which is not what we're going for. Well, because just think about it, if everything is like that cylinder, like a barrel, the moment you go into an hyperextension of the upper back, which is what they do, take a nice deep breath in, but it's really faking it because you're making your butt come out and your torso, the upper torso go back, you actually decrease that volume. So proper bracing 
is not. That's fake racing. Yeah, that, that, that's, which people that's, are so good at. Doing. That's what we what we don't want. Um, right. Essentially, what we do, what I try and tell myself and tell people I'm working with is try and like like as if you're gonna go hoop, like that. As if you're about to push a bowel movement, that's kind of what the, the sensation we want to work towards. I'm afraid of using that word, and I'll tell you why. Okay. This is just what I've encountered, because I work one-on-one -on -one with my patients just to teach them how to engage their core. And every time I do that, I'm like, if this guy pushes too hard, they're going to end up with hemorrhoids. So we have to be, it's, I can see what you say, or okay. like um, I have used the term uh, push as if you're about to pee. And then I thought that's actually not correct either. Okay. So I think you and I understand okay. it, but when for someone who needs to understand it, that's a little difficult. My instruction, and uh, I'm curious to see what you think. Okay. I always say, put your hand just, just like that, right at just above the pubic bone, a little bit, uh, above that and laugh into your hand like <gasps> with your mouth closed and you feel the pressure okay. yeah. down there that's where you want to stop anything beyond that is going to cause other issues okay, yeah. that, that's, so that's i kind think of that's the, a good visual yeah that's the the intent of what i wanted like right, to right. kind of press out i know the verbiage it plays I, such a yeah, general i haven't encountered i mean i didn't really think about that percussion yeah, but then again i have work with people who kind of know what I kind of want. Yeah, yeah. So that's good to, that's I probably won't use that as much anymore. Yeah, I think that's um, a good idea, especially for, for those of us who are watching and they're not, they don't really know what the core means, they've heard it. I think that's that's something you should try on. I have an actual video on this. I don't know if I can add to it, but it is definitely under the posture playlist on my YouTube channel, you can check it out. Okay. So then, so they engage, they brace, okay. properly brace. So we've, we've probably been braced, you know, our rib cage is down, which is going to facilitate our pelvis being posterior tilt, slightly posterior tilted, so we're stacked, shoulders and hips, um, and that's just the first step. So what does posterior tilt mean? So most of us, <laughs> our pelvis are up, and our, butt, trying to be a pain in the butt, and our but. butt is out, kind of like a, uh, a Donald Duck look. To slightly posterior tilt our hips, we're bringing, we're basically, if you squeeze your butt, squeeze and clench your butt, it's going to come. Uh, it it will initiate that. So you want to have, in other words, in simple terms, non-athletic <laughs> terms, is you want to have a neutral lower back. So your butt's not sticking out like that, and it's certainly not like that. So it's slight tilting, making your pelvis tilt in the forward fashion. So your pelvis, if it's like this, it, this part of your pelvis goes up. It's as if you kind of slightly push your pubic bone up towards the ceiling, wouldn't you yes, say? Yes. So it's a slight, and that's the key word, slight tilt. And the whole goal is to put you in a neutral lower back yes. posture. Yes. So that's posterior pelvis. Tilt. Yes. Sorry. Yes. So <laughs> that's what we want to train first, just so we can get into that position. And then from there, you know, we progress. So we've gone from one, walking, just walking, getting some movement in our low back, um, getting some some kind of blood flow to facilitate some recovery. And then we've learned how to brace. Uh, the next step would be how to move our limbs while bracing. And that doesn't necessarily mean you should go, go squat, go do anything, just uh, like a simple bird dog. Um, things of that sort where you're And bird bracing. dog, you know what that is, right? Yes. and. Not a conventional bird. This. Yeah. So we want to do a bird dog. Actually, too bad. And we want to use actively, actively brace our core. So we learn how to move our limbs in space while not compromising our integrity of our core. So now bear in mind for those of you who are watching, there is some degree of retraining that has to take place because you clearly injured yourself by not really supporting yourself as you're involved in the activity. So in my practice, John, what it's a, the term is dynamic neuromuscular stabilization or DNS, which is actually developmental kinesiology. So the movement of bracing your spine and your core, and now you know what that means, while independently moving your upper limbs, 
is a, a, when you, you've done it before, only you don't remember because at that point you were about four and a half months old. So this is what we did as babies to develop the pathway between the brain and the body parts. While going through the movements, we practiced, therefore built strength in the right muscles involved with those movements. So that's how it actually thoroughly, completely, 100% perfectly happened. And then we jacked ourselves up. Yeah. So what John is saying, you've already, you should have already practiced it on the floor, off the floor, with some coaching, now you're in action. You're actually now, you are passed from me or someone like me to John or someone like John. Now you're actually implementing your specific movement in real life while you're remembering the, the principles that you've learned by practicing in an office like mine. Yeah. So that's very, very important because your arm should be able to move without your core shifting. It's not that. You should be able to engage, stabilize, and move this without your body moving. Yeah, and, and that's yes. not easy. And that, that doesn't take place just here. I mean, when we think of working out, we think of you know, sweating, you know, working hard, getting out of breath, but you know, any movement you do, if you go, say you go to the gym, you want to be healthier or you're an athlete. If you go to the gym, they're all skills. I mean, squatting is a skill, benching is a skill, doing curls is a skill. It's a skill that it's going to take time to master and learn. Some might take longer than others. Like, is it going to take as long to learn a curl as opposed to an Olympic, like a high bar, high bar back squat? No, they're going to be totally different, but they're still skills. And so, like I said, I've squatted uh, 240 kilos before at five, over 500 pounds. And right now, uh, the, high, the heaviest I've worked with with a bar is 100 kilos. I've put it on my back, done three reps, put it back just so I can train, you know, try and train that uh, memory of a squat because my, my uh, motor patterns have been so messed up. So, you know, am I strong enough? Can I throw on 180 kilos? Yeah, I probably can, but. At what cost? Exactly, so we gotta remember that it's a skill and every time you go to the gym, you don't have to kill yourself. You don't have to think, okay, I'm going to leave with my legs. No, I can't feel my legs. You know, just try and go <laughs> and get better at squatting. Or try and go and get better at this. Thinking about it as, okay, I'm practicing. So when I master this, okay, now I can go and push it a little harder. Now I can go and really get after it. So it sounds like what you're saying is don't sacrifice the form for the weight or, um, the amount of sweat at each session of your workout, which is probably the smartest, wisest advice you can give anyone. I, I which think it's true. Yeah, I think it's a very prominent right now because you know we just started the new year. There's a lot of people oh, wanting to yeah, you know, get into shape. You know, which is great. You know, which is awesome if it's going to get you into the gym. But then, you know, when we go, just like throw everything but the kitchen sink at you, and you <laughs> are doing everything, and no, and then you unfortunately, maybe, hopefully not, you know, get hurt or you know, you burned out, you know, now what are you going to do? And so it's good to just, let's start with just learning how to squat. Okay, now let's put it like a 20 pound dumbbell in your hands. Now it's, it's all, we can always get harder and move forward. I think it's so important when you're working out to really work out with someone. I mean, it's, it's, I personally think having the proper trainer when you're working out is such an amazing investment because you need to have another trained set of eyes and your trainer, I mean, there, there are so many different types of trainers. You want to get the trainer that really pays attention to your form and is aware of that. Not, you don't need a cheerleader. You need an actual trained set of eyes to watch you. Now, one of the things that I see, John, in my practice is, and I do see professional athletes. I do see really active people. So it's not like they don't work out. What amazes me is I'm seeing people who are at the higher end of their athletic field, and yet they are amazingly weak in so many different muscles, which is like, how in the heck do you get where you're at with all these weaknesses? One thing I do see is really the oblique muscles and the lateral, the lateral muscles 
of the body. So what would be your recommendation for this is assuming you, you know how to work your core, you have been working out your core, you do have the proper integrity of this, you know the proper form, and if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, uh, look under posture playlist on my YouTube channel. But what would be your recommendation, given all of those are happening, now we need to really up the game and strengthen. Mm -hmm. What would be your recommendation? Lateral plank? So Side plank? The, I, I feel like the entire our entire core set needs to be strong. So what my recommend, recommendation would be before every workout, doesn't matter what you're doing, doesn't matter upper body, lower body, focus on, do some stabilization exercises for your core. So like Great a plank advice. and a side plank. I, I second that for sure. And it'll serve as, because is, is a 30 second, 45 second plank gonna wipe you out for your workout? No, definitely not. And, and if, if it, it does, is, you're not <laughs> then you shouldn't be doing anything exactly. else. You should go home because that means you you shouldn't be working out with weights at any certain intensity. But let's say you know you've been you've progressed to this point where we're working out again. Is a thirty second plank gonna wipe you up? No, it's gonna help you learn to okay. This is how I brace my core. This is how it feels like when it's turned on. You know, and it, no, I'm getting a little sweat and I'm getting ready for my workout. Exactly. So should we show a little bit of some of the things they should watch yeah. out for? I think I need to tilt that down. Okay. So may, uh, do you think we could do it here? Yeah. Um, let's see if, yeah, let me just uh, lower this a tiny bit. Mm, that should work. So of course your head is cut off. There we go, perfect. <laughs> let me just straighten that a tiny bit. And here we go. So, one of the best stable, like, stabilization exercises that I, I think um, when we're learning to just brace our core, uh, when we're first starting to apply uh, some instability, uh, I'd say is a RKC plank, which is a Russian kettlebell challenge plank. It's kind of similar to a regular plank, but most people, when they think of a regular plank, they kind of just sink into their hips. You know, you have that curve which or their is, butts in the air. Yeah. Which. Uh, that's not the that's not the neutral plank. Yes. Or so, the proper plank. Yes. So if we want to take our take our hip flexors out of the equation and just focus on our core, uh, what I would recommend is to what I'm going to do put my arms closer together and walk my elbows out about two inches in front of me. What this is going to do it's going to increase the lever arm in front of me, so it's going to make it a little bit harder. What I'm also going to do is post, squeeze my butt and post, forcefully lock out my knees by squeezing my quads. Absolutely. So I'm just gonna whip in the plank, elbows go forward, they come in a little bit, and I'm squeezing my butt. And if you can see, I was up for about three seconds and I was already starting to shake a little bit. It's going to be much, 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 much more difficult. You're not gonna be able to do it for a minute. I'd say a good school to shoot for first, 20 seconds, three sets, 20 seconds, and trust me, you'll feel it. Trust me, you'll feel much of a difference. you actually feel your core and your abs turn on and actually engage instead of just feeling your hip flexors and work. How about a side plank? For the side plank, I like the variation that I've learned from Dr. Stu Miguel. Uh, oh, I love Stu, it's Stu Miguel. yes. He's, he was paramount nice in me uh, learning how to Yes. Oh, my back. Uh, I learned. I just ate every, every, everything he put out. I just ate it up. Um, he is probably one of the best experts known on the back for he the is. back. He that. really is. He's got his PhD in kinesiology. You know that, right? Yes. Spinal kinesiology. Yeah. So I believe spinal. He he was paramount with this, but yeah, there's a different. There's a slight variation in plank side plank that he uses. There's many, 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 many. But one that I gravitated to was a side plank. It looks pretty uh, pedestrian, but the nuance in it is we want to make a fist with both our hands and we want to squeeze, 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 creating tension everywhere in our core. So I'm gonna get onto my side. Can you see me? Yeah. Top foot is gonna be on, up in front on the floor. Left arm is 90 degrees on the floor facing in front of me or over my face is. So in other words, your shoulder is stacked on top of your elbow, yes. and just a, just a little behind the scene, more technical thing, what you wanna do is you're 
you're hinging on the hip joint. So this is, I'm going to stand right in front of you. This is the spot you want to be working on. You're not on your, the side of your butt. Right, John? Yes. You're right on the hip joint, which is right up here, only on, on this side. So that and your elbow are on the same line. If I were to go over here, that's what are, they're on the same line. And because of the fact that your legs are able to move like a, I call it the bug leg. So you've got your exoskeleton, you can move the arms without moving the torso. So this comes forward, hinging forward, you're not tilting forward, and this comes back because then to give you more stability, mm -hmm. because the next thing to do is to go up, right? We're up. We're up. So you're going up, and this has to be engaged. I always tell my patients, pretend I have a knife right here, and if you go down, it's going to poke you. And what you're engaging is you're engaging your abdominal floor and your core, and you're really staying up. Now, what did you say about the, this thing? We're going to bring our right, our off arm up, right above us, and we're going to make a fist. And both of our fists are going to be squeezed, and our butt is going to be squeezed. So in this situation where people go wrong, and we do practice this at the office before I send them, send my patients off to go to a gym to actually work out, is you want to make sure, John, can you go back on mm -hmm. that again? So you want to make sure you're not into kyphosis or, you know, like curving that way or into lower back sticking out. And also you're not tilting the whole torso forward and backward, which is easy to do. The important thing here is to make sure the trap, which is up here, is not crawling up against your yes. neck or your ears. And you're not really sinking into your ball here and that you're actually not relying on your ligaments to support you but you as my daughter says put intention into your yeah. muscles lifting you up and that's the key so it's easy to duplicate this but not paying attention to do those tiny little details and you're not really doing it correctly wouldn't you say yeah one one easy thing that i think of and i tell uh, my athletes is that I'm trying to think of pushing the ground away with your elbow but yeah. it's really going to open everything up. So you're, you're really, your you're, um, line of pressure is really on your elbow and you're really elongating the whole thing as far as it goes short, short of shifting your body to the opposite side because you're trying to over elongate. But um, that's, a, that's a fantastic thing. And like, like well, we keep going back to, uh, it's so important to engage the core properly yeah it really allows you that that bag of air i showed you that really helps you maintain that posture for much longer now from the neurological brain neurology and postural aspect of uh, things you have to understand you mentioned 20 seconds there is an actual um, reason behind that because you need to hold a pose for a good 20 seconds in order for the brain to really say, okay, you're worth my attention now. Otherwise, it's so distracted by so many other things that's happening yeah. in your body. You gotta, you gotta give it a chance. Yeah. So um, I'm so, so proud of you, John. The more, uh, honestly, in these videos, I'm getting to learn more about John than um, I knew before. And I'm so proud of the different um, resources that you've gone to because of your own injury. Stu McGill is probably one of the brightest human beings I know. Not that I know, but I know. <laughs> and uh, he definitely knows his, <laughs> yeah, it, his stuff. Yeah, so. he, he definitely was, like I said, paramount in me fixing my back because, you know, he can break it down. Every, just If you go and watch one of his assessments, I think there's one of a, a power lifter named Lane Norton. He just breaks it down, everything. He tells you why he's doing everything. He tells you what could be wrong, what people might think is wrong. He just, he'll cover all his bases and he, it's just, it's great. I think uh, Dr. McGill's uh, uh, teachings go so hand in hand with the Anastor. There's, it's just, it's just an extension of that. So yeah. uh, it's, it's definitely very helpful. Well, it looks like we're, we're reaching the yeah. end of our hour. It seems like, I swear, every time we do this, just, like we could have gone for another couple hours. Uh, there's so much to cover, but thank you so much for taking the time and watching this. I'm grateful to 
uh, your encouragement and your participation to bring more awareness to the different things we're doing. Honestly, our society is not getting any healthier. And I'm seeing, I've been in practice long enough to have the privilege of saying uh, that from my own experience, I'm seeing what used to be older people's issues in younger people's generation. So we need to change that. And I, I'm glad to partner up with John so we can at least do our share of um, work to bring awareness. It's all about how you do things. Of course, we're here to help you out with anything that you can't do, but if we can provide you the information and you can just duplicate it, pay attention to details. Honestly, injuries happen when you don't pay attention to details. You're, when you look at a beautiful painting, you're, you find it beautiful because there's so many details put into it. You won't see it unless you start looking for it. So don't, don't uh, disregard the details in everything you do, including your workouts. And uh, remember that, you know, you're the decision maker and your body is at your mercy. So make the decisions, uh, good ones. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, John, for joining me. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be putting this video on YouTube channel under Irvine Spine and Wellness Center. I'll certainly share that with you once the minor editing we just add some info to the beginning and then it's available to you to rewatch. subscribe to the youtube channel uh, and don't hesitate to ask me or john any questions that you may have and thank you for watching